so let's let's turn now to the current pandemic because it, it would seem, you know, based on both your international experience, the the you know all the information that went into the book, um, and just this conversation that we're having right now, that you would be better equipped for the you know the, the beginning of a disaster of this sort than a lot of people. So when when you hear the initial rumblings about coronavirus and it starts to spread throughout Asia and then eventually hits the U.S., did you feel better prepared? How did how did your Absolutely. experience and your research? So yeah, you absolutely. Did. The first thing my husband and I did, and again, you know, he was in Europe, I was in upstate New York. We communicated immediately and said, "This, you know, this is gonna hit the fan." And you know, what do we have in the house? He had already thought about this and had already upped some of the supplies in the house. And then, you know, we already had telemedicine, but we anticipated that that was going to be a factor. So we made sure that everybody knew everybody's codes in terms of telemedicine and whatnot. One thing that we did prepare at that point was updating our will. Our will was a little mm-hmm. bit out of date. We thought, you know, we're of that age and that demographic where something might happen. We really don't want to stick our kid who's 19 with, you know, trying to figure out like, you know, the will. We got in touch with the executor of the will and said, you know, Sarah, just want to let you know this is where everything is. We told our son where all the important documents were. So, you know, did it make us less anxious? Um, I mean, we were worried about a pandemic, but we also did feel uh, calmer than if we had not yeah. made these preparations. Yeah, yeah, and as you said, you were in perhaps the hardest hit location on Earth, and in terms of deaths, um, you, you talked there about panic buying, and and you gave us a list of some of the things that that it would be wise for people to prep and and have. We know that many people responded to you know the initial calls for lockdowns in the U.S. by Going and buying a year-long supply of toilet paper, specifically, are and and I know that some people are they're doing their best. You know, they're worried. Yeah. They don't know how to respond. They haven't read the book yet. Yeah. Are there other things that people get wrong about preparing for these sorts of diseases that they invest in the wrong things? I would say that's the primary one, and I'm really mystified. I mean, I understand we all want clean butts, but you know there is water in the house, <laughs> uh, and and it's largely a respiratory disease. I was really kind of puzzled by that because I've been in other crisis areas, and that's not usually what people stock up on. They usually stock up on food. Um, I think for the most part, the foods that people were buying, uh, you know, lentils, canned tomatoes, that all made sense. But it was the toilet paper that really, really flummoxed me. Yeah. I, and I, I have no, I, you know, some psychologist could write a PhD, you know, or a book about <laughs> why this is. I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure it's happening. And it, it literally took up until the last few weeks for in my region for it to just be expected that you could go and buy more. Um, and I, I know one other aspect of of your discussions about this topic includes um, being able to understand and identify the stages of different disasters. And so I, I'm curious, the disaster that we're in right now. How would you rate it in terms of which stage it's in and, and how that should influence the way a person continues to prepare? I think it's thoroughly geographically dependent. I mean, I'm in New York right now. It seems like they've gotten it pretty much under control. I predict as soon as kids go back to college, we're gonna have a very, very bad second wave. But other parts of the country, you know, they're already getting their second wave. And other parts of like in upstate New York, where I was during my writer's residency, you know, it was virtually untouched. So I think it's it's hard to generalize mm-hmm. because it, it really varies on where you are geographically and also the role that the local authorities have taken. I mean, I think Governor Cuomo handled this very, very well. I can't say the same for our federal government and other governors. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the things that that I've noticed about the prep is some of it, you know, I guess would be free aside from time. Some of it having, you know, a month's supply of food, a month's supply of cash, hypothetically, could be costly. Do yes. you think that either city, state, or the federal government should be providing the aid necessary for people who are going to be hardest hit by this, that are economically least well off, to be able to prepare in, in some of the ways that that you've talked about? Hundred percent, yes. Absolutely, and what happened here in New York is um, community groups and NGOs filled the gap to a certain extent, and that was very challenging. It's very, very challenging, and I do worry about what's ahead. I mean, we have very inadequate health care. 
uh, for most people in this country. We have, um, as you, you know, people are more hard hit financially now than they were before. Yeah. And I do worry about, uh, you know, what what lack of preparation and help is being given to people. I'm very, very concerned about it. Exactly, and um, you know uh, we've been going through this one crisis. There are the potential crises of evictions and foreclosures and things like that coming. So uh, hopefully, people will be prepared uh, for those as well. Uh, the book is How to Drag a Body and Other Safety Tips You Hope to Never Need: Survival Tricks for Hacking Hurricanes and Hazards Life Might Throw at You. Judith Matloff, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate the conversation. Thank you very much. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.